Is it possible this brand of teas will actually reduce your slice and spin? Because there's a few members of the public that seem to think that's the case. Now, the reason I stumbled across these magical golf teas is because I'm on a golf trip next week and I have zero wooden teas and I completely forgot to ask Vice to send me some at the start of the month. So therefore, I went on to good old Amazon, typed in golf teas and started scrolling through with some rather interesting interesting choices uh, that you could be choosing from. However, as I scrolled down, there was definitely a title that caught my attention. It's almost as if that was my YouTube title six years ago. Get as many search words in there as possible. Help reduce spin and slice. Improve distance and precision can be used for a driver or iron, which after seeing these in person, I'm not quite sure how that would work. But it doesn't stop there. This one in particular made me chuckle. However, the difference of these teas, because I've seen these teas in the past, however, this one is designed to go in at 10 degrees. And I'm quite interested, does that actually help anything? However, the bit that did make me chuckle is that the infographic they've used, I mean, I'm not being funny, matey is sky in that. I mean, that's like a three degrees angle of attack down into the ground, and that ball is going 100 foot in the air. Not to mention this one was even better, as in the first one it says, make sure that arrow is pointing towards your drive. And then in the next one, maybe he's got it pointing out to the left hand side. And I'm incredibly interested, if I'm putting this at the opposite angle that my driver's coming in at, Will I actually be able to break any of these? Not to mention, can I see more distance? Can I see more ball speed as we see here? And again, this rather interesting graphic we have on the left-hand side, on average, two yards distance gain, which again is incredibly difficult to measure. And would that actually help your scores over 18 holes? Higher peak height, less spin, and higher launch angle versus the ordinary tea. However, that didn't quite pull me in until I read the reviews. Paul Stevens, for example, said he was slightly skeptical, but actually they seem to work. I'm getting my drives down the middle a lot more. And as I went through more of these, I'm starting to think, how is this actually possible? This one stopped slicing, but since using these for the last two rounds, his slice has gone. Excellent, golf tea did their job. These teas are what they say they're going to do. Therefore, I had to buy them and obviously give them a test. But before we go into these, I have to thank Vice for sponsoring today's video. And excited to say I've got my own discount code with Vice now. Anytime you want balls, accessories, 10% off, as long as you use the code SASGOLF. So this is what I was greeted with after obviously arriving on Amazon Prime the next day. 10 teas from Swift Tea. Nice little box, and as they say, it should be able to withstand 100 hits compared to a normal tee. And there's a reason I use rubber tees, obviously, in the studio, because wooden tees do break quite easily. So here's the rules. I'm going to do alternate shots, five shots each, going wooden tee, rubber tee, swift tee. Because I'm not being funny, there must be a huge market in golf tees, and the amount of times I hear less friction from a golf tee. This one has to arguably be the worst, surely. I have to say it was an incredibly strong start for the wooden and rubber tee, as I basically put them alongside each other with incredibly good numbers as well. Now setting the swift tee at the right height, the right angle, making sure that arrow's pointing towards the target was definitely somewhat fiddly. And after the first shot with it, the result was, well, somewhat underwhelming. But as I progressed through the testing round, I somewhat could understand why people were starting to think that these tees are magical and can make you hit further and straighter shots. And it's why I kind of laughed at that infographic at the start saying two extra yards compared to the ordinary tee because there's so many variables when it comes to a good drive. Whilst we're on the topic of spin, if you want less spin, not necessarily with the driver as it doesn't make that much difference to drives. But overall in your game, these two options are probably better for you. And obviously it'd be the opposite of my swing, whereas I'm trying to increase my spin. Hence why golf balls can be quite important. For example, after I'd hit round two and three with the rubber and wooden and obviously Swift tee, 
These two were just out the hill. This one, club face, obviously too close. This one out to the right. These ones were all pretty much middled. I have to say at this point, the Swift tee was definitely looking a bit more consistent. I'm starting to think, are these magical tees? But as I then started hitting round four and round five, I kind of noticed what I was doing different with these compared to, well, the other two. So then we went through round four and round five, obviously still trying to swing the same, but what I realized is that I was spending so much time putting this Swift tee in the ground, making sure that arrow is aligned to the target. I was almost drawn to then walk away from the ball and look down my target line. Therefore, when I think back to those reviews and some people go, actually, these tees are making me play a lot better. I'm hitting the ball a lot straighter. It's because you're actually taking time over your setup into hitting the ball down the fairway. Very interesting final numbers and how I know some golfers are actually gaining distance off the tee with potentially the swift tee. Now to reiterate, I tried to get these as close in terms of tee height, so that wasn't a variable. But when we look into the numbers, there's probably something else in play that makes a lot more golfers hit this straight potentially to your normal one. Obviously, I mentioned setup being one of them, especially if your miss is out to the right, a subconscious beginner understandably is gonna aim out to the left-hand side, which makes your path even more out to in, it opens your shoulders, it creates more curvature. So before we get into the ball data, Regardless, bearing in mind I did these all alternate as well, my numbers were relatively consistent. Arguably, I had more variance, however, with the Swift T, and that 0.8 means that I was able to hit up on the ball by seven degrees, which by the way, I don't ever want to do, or down on it by 0.8 degrees, whereas the other two were a bit more consistent. And I can only put that down to psychology, as when you're standing over this thing, I mean, it does look weird, I'm not going to lie. And potentially, I didn't want to top the thing, so I ended up, well, trying to hit up more through it. However, you can tell from one of my last shots, that definitely wasn't the case, as I did hit a big sky at 18 degrees launch. I mean, it still was enough on the face to get a good distance. That being said, I do swing quite fast, but I only broke the wooden tee once, and that's because I hit up on the ball. And if you break your tees a lot, i.e. every drive, it's because you hit down into it too much. Last bit of club data, more club head speed from the Swift tee, and I'll explain in a minute why I think that was the case. However, at 120 miles an hour, I mean, that's a fraction of difference. So if you swing at 80 miles an hour, you're never gonna see a difference in terms of extra club head speed. But notice this here, and what's so important about impact factors with the driver, 1.46, 1.44, 1.43. And the less launch that there was, the more compression I got into the ball, i.e. better efficiency, but then I also got more spin as a result of it. In short, the wooden tee, I was coming right out the middle, and they're both the same height, but for whatever reason, subconscious, I was hitting the Swift T much more up here, which if you know about gear effect, the higher up the face, the higher the launch, and then the less spin. So I'm not surprised if some players are used to hitting it low off the face, low launch, loads of spin, and then all of a sudden, Swift T, the strike location then changes to up here. I wouldn't be surprised if they gain some distance. If you want maximum compression, you want a neutral path. You want a slight angular attack up and you want that face towards the target. Hence why with the wooden tee, when I was hitting here, more ball speed. Here, less resistance. Hence why my club head speed went up slightly. But you can see how my swing's geared to a wooden tee. Have that right launch angle, tiny bit more spin, therefore I can hit somewhat straighter drives. However, for some players that are used to hitting low heel, set up a tiny bit better with the arrow, think subconsciously I need to hit up on the ball more and start finding the ball up here, I'm not surprised that their ball's going a bit straighter. That's the worst case scenario is for nine pounds, they seem quite durable, so if it changes nothing, then realistically it should last you just as long as a full pack of tees. Guys, if you've got any questions during your golf bag or golf game, sasgolfacademy.com. Catch you guys later.